Welcome to the 2003 National Preservation Conference, New Frontiers in Preservation. I'm Joe Moravec, Commissioner of the Public Building Service at the U.S. General Services Administration. GSA is happy to once again be a conference co-sponsor. When GSA was established over 50 years ago, we became stewards of an impressive federal building legacy. One of the real gems in our inventory is the Byron R. White United States Courthouse in Denver. This splendid neoclassical courthouse is a monument to early 20th century American aspirations in the Wild West. The building proudly mixes symbols of ancient Greece and Rome with the American frontier. Lining the facade are noble ionic columns capped by eagles, representing the federal government. Bighorn sheep sculpted by Gladys Caldwell Fisher flank the entrance, bringing to mind the nearby Rocky Mountains. Carved into the gleaming white Yule marble walls are inspiring Latin inscriptions along with the names of adventurous Pony Express riders, including Buffalo Bill Cody. Today, the Byron R. White United States Courthouse stands as a working monument to American justice in the 21st century, thanks to an award-winning $28 million renovation completed by GSA in 1994, along with GSA's other nearby buildings, including the 1931 U.S. Custom House, the 1965 Byron G. Rogers Federal Building and U.S. Courthouse, and the new Alfred A. Arage U.S. Courthouse, the 1910 Byron R. White United States Courthouse serves the needs of federal workers while adding to the vitality and architectural richness of historic downtown Denver. Enjoy your tour of this stunning federal courthouse. <laughs> It was in terrible shape. It had been abused, misused. Uh, it just, uh, uh, it was a tragedy. They gutted entirely the uh, Circuit Court of Appeals courtroom, tore the marble out, uh, ruined it. In our historic courtroom, the post office had hung a floor, had poked holes in the ceiling and hung a floor, so that it was, at, they actually made a two-story level on those circular uh, panels, uh, it, it was red, white, and blue. It looked a little like a birthday cake. The big, generous hallways that were 20, 30 feet wide get cut down into a slanty little place where you walk between office boxes and cubicles and whatnot. By the 1980s, the once majestic Denver Post Office and U.S. Courthouse was the victim of three decades of crude renovations artless attempts to modernize and expand. These renovations proved as inadequate as they were destructive. We had outgrown the available space. The number of judges was increasing. There are more ju senior judges staying active within the court. And uh, the court was looking for space. I don't think we want to go in that building. It's too old. It's uh, not really suitable as a courthouse. Let's build us a new building. Denver was having growing pains, again. Denver was founded as a flash in the pan. Uh, some golden sand was found in Cherry Creek in the South Platte in the summer of 1858. And this gave birth to one of the great mass migrations in U.S. history. It had a quick start and then a bust. The problem was that the railroad passed Denver by due to what the editor of the Rocky Mountain News called a few hills west of town. Railroad engineers called it a two-mile high barrier of mountains. But Denver was desperate to be in touch. So it turned to plan B, the Pony Express. Yeah, the idea was to, to deliver first-class mail only as quickly as possible. You know, money, letters, important things like that. So it was done, done by individual horsemen. Buffalo Bill Cody was one of them, young, slender guys who could ride fast on very fast horses. In 1870, Denver's dream came true. The railroad finally arrived. Two decades later, the queen city of the Plains was thriving with a post office, a courthouse, and visions of real grandeur. 
Denver's Mayor Spear went to Chicago, saw the uh, World's Fair in 1893, and was impressed with how Chicago transformed this marshy lakefront into a city beautiful, into these classical, be uh, beautiful cities. Well, he comes back to Denver with this vision, dancing in his head, this dream of how beautiful and wonderful cities could be, and begins to transform Denver, which was a very dusty, drab, ordinary, unplanned, uh, kind of chaotic boom town. Denver's quest was to be the center of power in the new American West. But there was one mark of legitimacy it lacked, a big new federal building. There was a design competition. Twelve architects competed in the competition, and Tracy Swarthroat in Litchfield won the competition. Uh, Swarthroat was a, um, a student of McKim, Mead, and White, worked in their office in New York, and this was their first big commission. The federal building would serve mainly as a post office, but it would also contain courtrooms and other governmental offices. And the idea, with, particularly with Mayor Spear and his city beautiful dream, of giving it the glory that was Greece, the grandeur that was Rome. Right here in Denver, Colorado was a beautiful neoclassical building, which that courthouse is, a Greek temple made of Colorado, glistening white Colorado Yule marble. The building's monumental proportions and classical design would make Denver a true outpost of Western civilization. And this is a symbolic building not only for the United States but for the state of Colorado and really for the Rocky Mountain region because it's one of the few neoclassical structures of such stature in the Rocky, in the Rocky Mountain areas. Ionic columns, short spans between columns, the, the, just the, the exuberant use of marble, uh, the carvings, uh, the way the stone was incised. Uh, everything was pretty true to uh, to what a Greek temple might have been uh, in Athens. <laughs> Yet it was uniquely American. The column capitals incorporate eagles, the United States Capitol, and other symbols of our American justice system. There's a list of other post offices where the letters that began here would be sent across the country. It also includes some Latin inscriptions, uh, quotations from original Roman laws, and various uh, invitations, invitations to sit and rest for a while, but not to rest for too long. Denver is always noted for the Rocky Mountains and the wildlife and the uh, outdoor activities for Colorado. And along the side entrances to the facility, we have marble sculptures of the bighorn sheep that are known throughout the uh, Rocky Mountains. They were commissioned in 1936. They were commissioned by uh, a lady named Gladys Fisher, a Denver native who was prominent in uh, local sculpture during the 30s. The white marble that's been quarried out of Marble, Colorado has also been known for its popularity with uh, a lot of sculptors from the past and some of the more notable items that have been the Lincoln Memorial and also the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The interior of the building featured four principal spaces, the post office lobby, the district court, the court of appeals, and the law library. The first floor lobby was originally the main post office for Denver, and in honor of the history of the Postal Service, they carved the names of various uh, Pony Express riders in the walls. Finally, Denver had its place on the national map. Now it needed to prove it was world class. By the late 1950s, the court had grown and times had changed. Building residents needed more office space and other modern amenities. A heavy-handed remodeling project ravaged the building. But by the 1980s, even that wasn't enough. 
the building was obviously inadequate for uh, the court as it was growing. And uh, the Byron Rogers, as it came to be called, courthouse was built, which came online in 1965, later in the year. And we all moved uh, to that uh, building. In 1973, the old Denver post office and U.S. courthouse was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. It was listed as a Denver landmark in 1974, but its fate remained uncertain. In 1988, the General Services Administration acquired the derelict building with the goal of restoring it to serve the needs of a 21st century judiciary. The commitment of GSA to that kind of historic preservation really speaks volumes about the commitment of government generally to remembering our, our historic links and how powerful they are as reminders of who we are today. The GSA requested qualifications from architects, and based on that, they held interviews. The winner was Denver's own Michael Barber Architecture. At $28 million, the renovation would be both cost-effective and sensitive to the building's architectural integrity. The price per square foot was $115, roughly half the cost for a new courthouse. It was a tremendous investment. At the time, obviously, $28 million seemed like an awful lot of money. As a matter of fact, at one point in the project, we had to go back to get an additional $10 million. But I think anybody who looks at this building today knows that that was a bargain. In 1991, the building was closed for renovations. The architects worked closely with a judge's restoration committee. They spent a lot of time talking to us about what our needs were in terms of space and then they took that and interpreted it for the, in accordance with the history of this building in a really sensitive and great way. And so when they, we sat down with them, we'd come for a meeting. As I recall, they'd sh show us these plants and we'd say, wow. Uh, I changed my view altogether and, and got very excited about it to the point that I had my own hard hat. I used to come over here every day, morning and evening to check on the progress. The exterior was completely cleaned and the marble repaired. Fortunately, the quarry that had closed after the building was first constructed had now reopened. But the big changes were on the uh, public floors, the first and second floor, where there was a post office, a functioning post office, and that was converted into the courtrooms and the public gallery. Five new courtrooms were created, four appellate and one district including the ceremonial en banc courtroom, where all judges can sit together to decide difficult cases. When I became chief judge and walked out in the middle of that en banc courtroom, that was awesome. I mean, that's a, that bench is, as you know, is very large, and the courtroom is just, it's a magnificent place. The main corridor of the second floor was also restored. They understand, I think, almost, uh, uh, you know, without realizing it, that they're in a special place doing a special thing. And as you go through the velvet curtains down there and look up at uh, the inscriptions on the walls, you think about all those who've occupied those chairs before you and the really enormous responsibility that is entrusted to us to carry forward that legacy. An historic law library was converted into a smaller courtroom. This is my favorite because it's so small and it's intimate and when you're sitting on the bench and the lawyers are right here, it's a much, uh, it's a different kind of experience than in the big courtrooms. You see the decor of the books, uh, you see the closeness of the judges and the closeness of the attorneys, it gives you a sense that that uh, justice is being done and the law is being followed in this courtroom. An unusual semicircular grand jury room overlooking the courtyard was converted into a judge's meeting room. All building systems were brought into compliance with current safety and ADA accessibility standards. The emergency stairs in the sunlit law clerk's quarters required an especially innovative design. There was a lot of research projects along the way uh, to fit modern technology with a historic building. 
I think this building is one of the great examples of how you can use an old building and meet new needs. Uh, we were able to completely equip it for technology and yet keep this wonderful grandeur of an old courthouse. I think we are space providers, but we also have the good fortune to have a, a wonderful stock or portfolio of properties, and many of those are historical. We are able to maintain and manage just tremendous projects and properties. I think all of us are proud to have a property like this in our inventory, and obviously the, uh, the community knows that, the industry knows that, and our customers know that. Within GSA, the Center for Historic Buildings develops preservation policy and provides agency-wide guidance on how GSA can best preserve, modernize, and reuse the historic federal buildings in its inventory. On August 10, 1994, the courthouse was rededicated the Byron R. White Courthouse in honor of the first Colorado native ever appointed to the United States Supreme Court, a man hailed by President Kennedy as the ideal New Frontier judge. It, it really does seem to me that this building was destined to be named Justice White and that uh, he fits the building as well as the building fits him. Uh, but durable, tough, granite, solid, honest, no frills, western, love of history, public service, commitment, uh, uh, the common man, modest. He was the most famous athlete of his time. He was on the cover of Time magazine and Life and, and uh, was an All-American. He went on to become a Rhodes Scholar and then he went to uh, the war and like everything else he didn't just go to the war he showed that courage uh, and that exceptional devotion to duty then he went to law school and once again he didn't just go to law school he graduated first in his class on the law review at Yale he at the same time was playing professional football and not just playing professional football but he was drafted number one and Justice White is the only justice ever to be elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, the only justice ever to have played pro football, you know. Then he uh, worked for President Kennedy in his campaign, became the Deputy Attorney General of the United States, and then at age 43 was appointed to the United States Supreme Court. With the renovation of the Justice Byron White Courthouse complete, the building became as celebrated as its namesake. There's been a number of awards and there's also a regional historic, uh, historical society has presented awards to this facility for preserving the historic intent of the facility. The next project, Honor Award project, is also historic preservation and restoration. The Myron White U.S. Courthouse, Denver, Colorado. The highest award that this facility has achieved for design and uh, historical renovation was the Presidential Design Award and that was quite an honor. I know that it is true that all of the court uh, feels that this building is the public's building and that to the fullest extent possible, we want to make it not only open to the public, but friendly to the public. The building also continues its legacy as the backdrop for many important cases. This is a special building. And I've been in courthouses all around the country Many of them are very beautiful, many of them are very modern, but when I come home, I feel like I'm in a courthouse again. I watch lawyers and school children and visitors from the public fairly closely uh, to see what their reaction is to these rooms because there are very few buildings left that are able to maintain the incredible uh, 
awe-inspiring atmosphere that you find in this courthouse. And whether it's a small child or a very practiced lawyer, they stop and they look around and there is a, a, a sort of a quiet that sets in before we go to the business of the day. I think with all of the aluminum and steel in downtown Denver, uh, it was important that we regain a sense of the past. Uh, I love this building. And I think it has helped to restore a sense of where Denver was and how it has changed.